and gentlemen, welcome to another photo critique from photorec.tv. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or even store, or you can combine portfolio and store to sell some of your prints. We could talk about how wonderful Squarespace is, how easy it is, but instead I want to take just a few moments and show you some of the really neat features, especially for photographers. Now I've got a longer video that I've got linked down below this one that really will go into full depth. But I want to take just a few moments and show you how to set up a gallery and a gorgeous cover page without all of that worrying about what size your images should be, how to arrange this stuff, setting up the navigation. That is all handled for you by Squarespace. Let's jump right into this example. I'm working with the flat iron theme or template as Squarespace calls it. They have a huge variety of templates that are just a great starting point and then you can customize them and really make them look the way you want. And some templates come with bits pre-installed for you. Like for example, the flat iron template has this work page that then allows you to create these sub pages underneath of it. And so, so far, all I've managed to do in this example is have this work page and an about page. That's all I've got. And the work page right now is my home page. We're going to rectify that in just a second. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Underneath, I've got an empty folder. You can see there's a place to add galleries or pages to this work folder. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click add gallery or page. This nice little slide out comes and I'm going to choose add a gallery. This is going to be a subset of some of my work. And it's important to keep it kind of uh, subsetted uh, apart from the rest. You don't want all of your stuff mixed together. You want the people who are coming to your website for a certain reason to be able to see the work that they want to see and not mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to call this catering because I'm going to put in it a bunch of catering photos for future caterers that might want to hire me and take some food product photography. Collection is empty, click here to add your first item. That's actually, it lies, it'll allow you to add items. So I've come into this little folder I have on my desktop that includes catering, and I've got a bunch of images in here. I don't know what size these images are other than I exported them at full resolution. I didn't have to worry about making web ready sizes. Squarespace is gonna take care of all of that for me. They're all uploaded now, but I don't want to lead off with the wine bottles in this list. As you can see, they just scroll down the page, all nicely fitting on the page, and they will resize based on mobile devices. So this is a responsive design uh, or the browser width. But I want to lead off with this one with a nice little heart-shaped toothpick. So I'm just going to click and drag that there. And now you can see that it's redesigned. That looks great. I like that. I can come back to pages and let's look what the work page looks like now. It has a thumbnail and I hold my mouse over it, catering, and it does that kind of nice zoom in effect when you mouse over it. I could add a second gallery and I'm gonna do that now. Same process. Now you can see that I've got two galleries on this page, catering and industrial, and as you add more, they're going to fit in like a nice little puzzle piece and it's gonna look beautiful. Last thing I wanna do is I don't actually want this to be the home page. I wanna make a new page to be the home page. So I'm gonna come up to main navigation and I'm gonna choose cover page. These are these gorgeous browser width images that you can display as the landing site on your page. So I'm just gonna call this home because it is going to be my home page now. Comes up with this example, Haley. So we wanna change some things though. I don't want Haley's name. I wanna change it to my name. And following her lead though, I'm gonna say photographer and a quick description, see the world through my lens. I'm going to save that, go back a page, and come down here to imagery. We don't want a picture of Haley. I'm going to kind of upload images, and in that same place, I set aside a cover page image. And again, I just simply exported this out of Lightroom or the program of your choice at its highest resolution. Squarespace is going to take care of designing or showing um, all of the different resolutions needed for different screen sizes. And there we go. Now we want to make sure that we save, go back to home, and this action here um, that is currently view work, we want to make sure that goes to one of my pages. So I'm going to go to content, and I want to go to my work page. I'm going to click save, 
home pages. And now here's what it looks like. And we can use that little arrow to see full screen what a visitor would see. I can click on view work and now I'm on my work page. It's just that simple. Squarespace.com slash Toby will save you 10% off your first purchase. Link to check them out is right down below and we appreciate their support on this video. Let's get started with our February assignment, which All was right. shadow play. Shadow play. And we've got a couple images here that we've picked out that have been submitted over the course of the past couple of weeks. We will be talking about our March assignment. Well, you know what? We should just talk about our March assignment right, right. now. Let's do it. Because otherwise we'll say we'll talk about it later and then we'll forget. Sure. Depth of field. Okay. For March, wide open. Ah, oh, that could have been aperture I'm talking about. But no, I'm saying the theme for March is to control that depth of field. And that gives you, you know, that's a pretty broad category. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay. Totally. So we will be looking for that and there'll be a link down below this video soon and I'll put multiple calls out on both the website and the Facebook page um, reminding you and those should be due about the end of March. And one other programming note, I think this, uh, I think the general critique is going to go on a hiatus for a little while as we really focus on getting out some uh, targeted educational style videos and a couple product reviews that I'm getting a little, well, it's just that I need to get out. So, uh, but we will be back at some point in the future and we'll definitely be doing uh, the March depth of field critique at the end of this month or at the end of March, which we're almost there. Great. With that said, let's dive into this first image. I think I recognize this. Would you like to get us started, Christina? Of course. Um, well, I, at first glance, I, I really like this image because, well, I like the sectioning of um, all the different parts of it. For example, we've got this section right here with the sky, and then we've got this section. It's very geometric, very, um, very organized, and 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 I really like that a lot. Um, the Empire State Building is dead center, um, and usually we advise photographers to stay away from a dead center composition, but I think it works really well here. You've got a little bit of symmetry going on on both sides, so that makes the center composition uh, really work, work very well. Uh, one of the things that I love the most about this picture, though, is the shadow play. Uh, you've got these really dark buildings here. Uh, framing the brightly lit by the sun, the, the setting sun uh, Empire State Building. I think you did that really well. You timed it really, really well. Uh, so great job. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really love this. Okay. I, I agree. It's a really nice picture. Uh, by timing, you're talking about taking it at a time of day where the light level is such that it's not so bright on the Empire State Building that you'd have to adjust your exposure to, um, you know, match that and then lose everything in the shadows completely. Right. Our range, our natural range here is a little compressed. Uh, so the camera isn't as challenged and is able to, and this is what I really like about this picture, is that we still have some detail in the shadow. Um, yeah. All the way down into this area. And that's fine. I, you know, we'd lose a little down there, but that is great. If this was completely silhouetted, I think it would feel very different and just be too much. And it seems like the time of day that this was shot at was very purposeful. So, you know, you could shoot this image at any time of day, but you're not always going to get all of these shadows uh, at any time of day. You know, right. you're, yeah. you're going to get them at this particular time when the sun is in in a certain location mm -hmm. uh, illuminating the Empire State Building. Right. Well, you got a couple things to think about based on time of day they're shooting. The quality of the light, the intensity of the light, and the direction of the light. Right. All change over the course of the day. And so it's a lot of times we talk about the golden hour and people think about that kind of softer light, but there's other um, values to it, like I just mentioned, or that I just mentioned that play a huge role in how an image looks. I, I think one of my favorite parts of this image is the, the symmetry of the Empire State Building going up and then this empty space coming down right here on the mm. right. 
it almost is a mirror. I almost feel like I could flip the Empire State Building upside down and it would fit in that spot like a yeah. puzzle piece. And it really appeals to me. I yeah. think this is a great image. Brady did a great job. And who knows, maybe, maybe Brady just got lucky and was on his way home from work and said, hey, look at that shot. Hmm. Um, but Either I way. just really like it. It's a good photo. Thank you for submitting, Brady. Now, John's got a light post and some shadows on the wall. Similar, I wonder if we're gonna see, well this one was taken December 26 at 3.51 p.m. That other one was taken in early October at 5.50 p.m. I wonder if we calculated where, well we'd have to know exactly where and things of that sort to know, you know, how close or how similar, but the light has a very similar feeling here in this picture. It does have a very similar feeling. It doesn't have the same kind of impact that the previous photo has though. And it's not just because of the subject matter. I mean, you can make the argument that of course the Empire State Building is never going to compete against a light post. But, uh, you know, it's the same type of image in the sense that the position of the sun is at a similar place, casting uh, a similar type of shadow that the Empire State Building would cast at that time of day. But, it just doesn't have the same effect for me. So the, the main subject, which I take it to be the light pole, is almost dead center, not quite, dead, but it's not really framed by anything. In fact, it's intersecting with the shadow and this big shadow right here. And, uh, you know, this which becomes a focus point of the image is not really, it doesn't really stand out and uh, you know, you've got this branch that's just kind of coming in through here. So it's it's very cluttered and it's not very, uh, doesn't feel very intentional. Um, a couple things that you could do or maybe get in just a little bit closer, move around and try to maybe frame the shadow or frame the light post um, between the shadows that you see right here um, and try to organize the photo a little bit better. That would be my advice. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, um, again, with most of that comment. The little things that detract from me are just this hint of this piece coming in up here, the part of that kind of wall, or the top of the wall. Um, this white gutter, this white bench, this white wall here. Those things all feel a little messy. Um, and I think, I love, what I love is the top of this shadow light pole right here. It's, it's crisp. Um, and bright and it's got that nice sh defined shape to it and I think an interesting picture would be to come in um, in a lot more detail and kind of mirror these two things or maybe even leave out the real world stuff just capture the shadows mm -hmm. of it and leave us thinking about those objects making the shadows mm -hmm. I think those would help as well yep thank you John got Mike's guitar shadow play this makes me think of one a picture I've wanted to do or I've seen done lots of times, which is kind of cool, is um, taking a picture of somebody in front of a Venetian blind, you know, where mm -hmm. it's open slightly and they've got the nice stripes across them. Mm -hmm. In this case, we've got a guitar. And we've got, I think it's just a regular window. Um, it's a nice picture. I think it's framed nicely. I, I like that it's not perfectly square in the um, shadows. I, you know, I think that would be too much. I like that this angle comes up here. But, you know, at the same time, when we talk about impact, it does feel like a guitar with some shadows laying across of it. Across it. Yeah. Well, I don't think that it has a great deal of impact, but to me it's an interesting photograph because, uh, well, so for one, the the light values and the dark values in the photo are pretty evenly distributed. So you've got a lot of dark values, but also they're, but they're balanced by the light that is coming in uh, through the window. So there's a good balance, I, in my opinion. Um, I like the, the composition of the, of the guitar, uh, the dead center composition works. Um, and I do like that the, the shadows all the way above and all the way below sort of frame mm -hmm. the, the guitar, which you may have already mentioned. There's nice framing right here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that it, it, it has a great deal of impact, but it's, it, I like this photo. I, I think, 
Yeah, I yeah. like it. I'm just trying to come up with something, some some suggestion to take this idea and add just something a little bit more to it. Yeah. Well, my first thought is that I like the shadows coming from the window. I don't like the shadow that the guitar is casting. I think that's a little bit distracting. Um, I don't know of a great way that you could fix that um, because you're mostly just relying in the sun, the light would have to be almost directly above in order to minimize the shadow. So, you know, that may not work at all uh, with the buildings that might be around this window, mm -hmm. etc. Right. Um, but that's one of the, the main distractors for me is that shadow that's being cast by the guitar. Yeah. It's interesting, it's a long shadow because it makes the guitar feel like almost it's above the ground a little bit because it's stretching. I wonder, it sounds a little goofy, and you probably will kill this idea as soon as I throw it out there. Wow, but, but confident. I know, I got a lot of confidence. What about we had some shadow hands coming in and playing the guitar? <laughs> I kind of, you know, I like, I like that, that idea. Work. I mean, this, this assignment was called shadow play. Well, I think that the idea is good, but it all relies on the execution being also good right. in order to make it work. So you don't want this picture to feel cheesy, no. or maybe you do if that's what you're going for. But, you know, the idea isn't to make it feel cheesy. The idea is to add another element uh, that might tell a story to the mm -hmm. image. Um, but that doesn't also feel very gratuitous. That's what I mean. Tell a story with a shadow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Arnaud has this photo, which I'm not going to use the word impact right away, but I'm going to use the word intense. This has an intensity to it um, that uh, the previous pictures without human subjects have lacked. Yeah. Well, the use of heavy shadows in this photo definitely um, work well with the concept and with the overall feel of the photo. So you've got some very blue tones uh, going on there. You've got a fairly dark photograph and then you've got, um, you know, a big shadow sort of, you know, hiding half of this person. Uh, who is looks a little bit like you know like evil a little mean the, and evil to me <laughs> right right uh, it's partly because of the uh, you know we don't get the full expression of the face but what we do get is this very mysterious intense gaze um, yeah you know mysterious with a little hint of well I'm gonna go back to the intensity um, which <laughs> you know uh, is scary yeah, but um, that being said, you know, the, the, the shadows, the use of shadows and the use of light and dark works really well with this picture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some uh, constructive feedback, uh, if you wanted to improve this photo, um, it's, it's a nice photo uh, to start with. Um, but, you know, in the future, maybe you might want to set up your portrait lighting so that it comes from a slight, you know, well, you know, I was going to say to make it look a little bit more flattering, but in the case of this photo in particular, you don't really want it to look flattering. You want it to look rough and kind of, you know, uh, intense. Intense, right. So you don't want to very, to really use light to flatter the face by, you know. But do we want a little more light from behind to help with the separation over yes. here? Yeah. Yeah, because we're losing, we've lost the top of we've the head. We've got no hair. Um, and... Uh, so right now, the, the subject's right shoulder on the left side for us, if that light was swung a little bit further behind them, that would pop up a little bit of light around here. Yep, or just light. pop in a reflector or something white oh, yeah. yep. on the other side to uh, just kick back some light onto that the very dark side of the face. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it's a cool shot. Um, you know, I think the, the we didn't even, did we mention the water? I mean, we, we haven't even talked about the water. No, but oh. I do like that you can see some of the drops behind them. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of cool. That right. The drops are kind of catching the light. Right. So it adds a little bit of a three D kind of effect to it. Yeah. Very nice. Nice job. Thank you, Arnon. Don't know if that's a self portrait or not, but I think it might be. This guy looks familiar. I feel like you took a picture of him. We've met him before. We have met him before. This is by one of the participants on the McKay Photography Academy Bozeman, Montana trip. And this was our guide or bus driver or guide and bus driver for a while. And this is Randall's picture. 
and I like it. I like it too. Um, this is fits nicely in with a shadow play. We've got a cool portrait of this guy facing us, but then, I mean, this is a simple picture, but it works well. And we've got a really nice shadow profile. I mean, it's just uh, so clean Yeah. right here. And the hat, we got the full cowboy hat effect going on all the way down. And I think that's done really well. Yeah, another thing that I really like about this picture is that while he is very, very close to the edge, and that's something that I typically, you know, I typically leave a little bit more room. Um, the shadow, so you've got, you know, this is one kind of element in the image and then the shadow is another pretty key element to the image. And both both of these elements are, there's enough space or, or the same amount of space uh, from the edge of his coat to the edge of the picture and then the edge of his coat and then the edge of the picture. And so it feels really well balanced. Um, it doesn't feel, uh, you know, sloppy or it doesn't feel like there's any dead space around the edges. Um, one thing that I am noticing is the there's a little bit of distortion because it was shot at 14 millimeters. Uh, there is distortion around the edges. Mm -hmm. um, so you could either uh, do a little bit of lens correction in the develop module. And this is something that I actually we are talking... We're, but there already is some distortion. So, you know, if you enable that, hmm. you can also just play with this a little bit. It's very, or maybe not. Sometimes it yeah, makes a not, difference. It's not responding. But Shadow. it's not a huge deal. It's just, um, um, you know, if you wanted to work on this picture a little bit, um, then that's something that I might suggest doing. But Removing a little bit of distortion, right? Yeah, but it's not... Distortion is one of those things, at the, at the wider angles I often see it, um, but it's one of those things where until I turn that on in Lightroom and I realize how much better it looks once it's been corrected for the profile, I often don't necessarily notice it. Right, and oftentimes, you know, especially in this case, uh, shooting using a wide angle lens to photograph a person can actually you know, make them look taller and uh, almost larger than life. So. Um, you know, in this case, it probably Cowboys is just helping. Than life. <laughs> in this case, it's probably uh, just adding to the effect of, you know, kind of showcasing this guy as a character. So, yeah, he was a character. Thank you, Randall. So this is uh, it's from Jonathan Louis. Um, I am liking the composition. Uh, I think that you got. You know, I'm trying to figure out if this is overexposed or not. I don't think it is. Um, you know, I can clearly see the, the some of the shadow play. Um, one thing that I find um, that is a little bit, that, that I don't love about this photo is that you don't see any detail in the eyes. So there is too, there are too many shadows in the eyes. Yep. And this picture strikes me as one that is not supposed to be like scary or in pens uh, or, you know, have any negative feelings. It's supposed to be maybe a little bit flirty, a little bit, um, uh, you know, and, and when you have something... Did you want to say sexy? <laughs> maybe. Um, but if you don't have light in the eyes then that that can end up looking a little bit scary right um and dead. not have the effect and dead right. right and not the effect not having the effect the that intended. you intend yep another thing that i'm seeing is that the shadows are creating the effect that her wrists are larger or wider than they actually are mm. um so if you look closely you can tell that that's a shadow but if you just like glance at the picture then she looks like she's got really thick wrists and you know this, this it's not great, a big deal but um you know why would you make somebody's wrist wider if you don't have to they mm -hmm. don't have to look wider um but other than that i really like uh i like the depth of the transition from light to dark i like the contrast in the photo i'd say move your light source so that it, it lights up a little bit more of the eyes you can see right here you know it catches the bottom of her lip and if if it did 
that to her eyes a little bit, just add a little bit of catch, act of a catch light, it would improve the picture significantly. Right. Now, I think her eyes are closed, right? Her eyelids seem to be down. They're not closed. They're not closed? No. Really? Okay. So yeah, so then we definitely um, need that connection with the eyes um, or to see clearly. I do, I, um, you know, I really like the tone of this image. Um, the, I think the black and white conversion, or maybe it was shot black and white, um, is really nice. I feel like it's got this really nice kind of silver uh, tone to it that works well in this black and white. I agree that these shadows here are a little bit hard and um, just this out of focus area here. You're right with the wrist being cut off or the elbow being cut off down there? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. As long as you're fine with it, I'm fine <laughs> with it as well. Uh, and this vignetting up here, very I don't, heavy. I don't love that. Yeah. I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I think it has got going for it is it kind of mirrors her head here, but it's just too much too fast, and we don't see that anyplace else. Nope. Um, so that's, that, that grabs my attention a little bit more than it should. But again, the tone, I keep coming back to, I think her face here, if we could just get a little something in the eyes, it's yeah. really nice. And the, the lighting, you know, it's almost this, it's got this old Hollywood kind of quality to it. So it's, I mean, it's nice glamour lighting. It's, it's pretty. You just got to get a little bit more, more detail in the eyes. Great. Thank you. Who was that? Jonathan John Louis. Louis. All right. Now we got William's Shadow Tree. I really like this. Oh, it took me a second <laughs> to figure out what was going on. I I love this. I mean, I, I get that you are trying to create a tree, but that's not even what I love about it. I just love the texture. There's just so much texture, and the green is beautiful. And, um, and the shadows are just, I, there's just like a little bit of, of there's a, a little hint of a shadow. I, I don't know. I, this is a really great, you know, almost fine art image to me. Wow. It's, I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. I, I like it a lot too. I, I love that, um, you know, one that took me kind of a second to uh, you know, take in what's going on here. It's fun. My eye traveled around and realized that we've got good shadows down the bottom. And then they do, they fade into this kind of little, little bits of shadow up top that you just, you can't quite decide whether it's a shadow or um, from a tree in the background. Uh, and this is kind of similar back to the lamp post, where we're not seeing what's creating the shadow. We're just seeing the result of it on this material here. And it really plays out very nicely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like that these branches go up and kind of out. And then you can see that the, the little viney um, or the vines of this plant are also kind of going in the same direction. So it works really well. Um, one thing that I would probably try to improve is just to have maybe fill the entire frame. Because my eye keeps going back to this brick wall. And it's not, I mean, it's hmm. not a huge deal. Um, I still love this picture, but I think it might look a little bit stronger if it were all full of little leaves like this. And this is something that- Are you Sorry. That you can do in Lightroom by cloning. It wouldn't probably wouldn't be a very quick job, but it's definitely doable. That's interesting. I disagree. I like that brickwork down there mm -hmm. um, to give us a feel of you know where this is, and to give us more of a sense of place. This is clearly vines on um, a brick wall. If we saw all green. I feel like I might be really confused and try to figure out, is this a hedge and are we seeing hints yeah, of branches in there? Yeah. So I, I, I like it and I think it's a good example of when um, you can have this imperfection that makes it a little bit stronger. I will say it does draw the eye a, a bit, but... Yeah, you're right. Um, I think you're right. I guess I would like to see a little bit more green down there. I do okay. still definitely want to see brick because you're right, it does give context to the green right. and where it's coming from. But... Um, I, overall, I, I really, really like this. I think one of the other things that appeals to me about this um, is that the dendritic nature of it to get fancy. Uh, you know, I I had in mind all, all this month driving around, I was thinking shadow play, shadow play. I was keeping watch. And it's been so cloudy. That's my excuse. I don't have any. But um, actually, I do have one picture I took that I was going to submit, but I didn't. Anyway. Um, but what I noticed on the few days that were sunny is, especially with all the snow we have around here, I love the patterns the trees make on the snow and the shadows, this dendritic branching nature. And I love how that mirrors across so many things in nature from like 
deltas to our veins to mm -hmm. the vines which is pretty similar to trees and so i just i think that appeals to me and it's been captured here yeah nice job william thank you tanner's got a window to the past so this is another one where we're not seeing what's creating the shadow i guess we could say that same thing about a couple of these beyond my suggestion at the beginning but but we can tell it's a window yes we can uh, yeah absolutely we can tell a window but we don't know you know, it's from behind us somewhere. Right. Or to the left, actually, since we got a little bit of an angle. Right. But it's also underneath an existing window. Right. I like that play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I guess I was just kind of trying to collect my thoughts and really think about what I was going to say. Um, so one of the things that I really like about this picture is that just by seeing all of this texture and all of this kind of decay you can tell that it's an abandoned house mm -hmm. you can tell. and i could be wrong but that's what it that's what it seems like to me that it's an abandoned house mm -hmm. um i really like the colors and the wallpaper uh -huh. <laughs> i like the wallpaper a lot um which is has nothing to do with photography but well but it, it has to do with this picture it, it's more of the story that you know this was Probably a fairly nice room at some time, decorated right. nicely. Um, the highlights, a lot of the highlights seem very overexposed to me. Mm -hmm. So I would watch that. You remember you can expose, create or create a balanced exposure and then fix the tones in Lightroom um, or another editing software to you know bring back shadows that might be a little bit dark or bring back highlights that might be a little bit too light. Um, but if you overexpose or underexpose to the extent that you lose detail in the shadows or highlights, then, you know, it just doesn't, it, it loses its kind of, uh, I want to say like professional quality or, you know, technically speaking, it's not a great thing right. to do. It's, it's, a, it's a mark against it when that happens. Right. Yep. I, you know, I like this image. Uh, Again, coming back to the impact, I, I kind of fall back on that when I don't have a whole lot else to say. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot of impact for me, but it does have that bit of story that we were talking about mm -hmm. where, you know, the wallpaper peeling and there's another window in this room and here's a glimpse, glimpse out this window. So those things all kind of work together to tell the story of a once fine establishment that is and now that had left awesome it, wallpaper that had awesome wallpaper that now is the, i don't think there's such a thing as awesome wallpaper no you've yeah. never had to take wallpaper off a house i bet once you've done <laughs> that you have an entirely different opinion of wallpaper um but the tone and the texture here is really nice and the the, the this, you know these areas that are seem blown out uh, i think it's a, you know both a factor of being slightly blown out and maybe just sun bleached as well. It does really feel different than outside of that area yep, is distracting. That's true. Um, but otherwise, nice. Good? Good. Okay. Thank you for that, Tanner. Thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, and um, We'll be back next month with uh, the photo critique um, for that assignment. What was it? Do you remember? Uh, depth of field. Depth of field. Depth Show of us field. some control of depth of field. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean just go out and take razor thin depth of field photos. So, but or show us a mastery. Or super deep. Or super depth deep. Depth of field photos. Right? Put your camera on AV and F22 and go wild. That's what I say. F22 and go wild. All right, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for participating. And. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye.